Test check example, Palms version 0 0.5. In this example, we will demonstrate how to check to see if an algorithm is correct through a simple desk check. This example involves an algorithm to implement the Pythagorean theorem, a simple formula from high school geometry. As a reminder, the Pythagorean theorem involves computing the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The hypotenuse of a right triangle can be computed from the formula c squared equals a squared plus b squared, where c is the length of the hypotenuse and a and b are the lengths of the other two sides of a right triangle. So how would we begin the task of writing a program to compute the length of a hypotenuse? Well, first we need to figure out a name for our algorithm, and that's easy. We'll call it Pythagorean Theorem. Next, we'd want to consider what information we need to know in order to solve the problem. Well, the two things we would need to know are the two are the lengths of the two sides that are not the hypotenuse. In this case, what we had called A and B. Those two things would be the inputs to our algorithm. The next thing we want to consider is okay, what do we want this to produce? Well, given the Pythagorean theorem, we want to compute the length of the hypotenuse what we called C. A final thing we'd want to consider is, well, are there any relevant formulas or other information which has a bearing on how we solve the problem? And indeed there are. We have one formula which is going to be applied in our algorithm. The Pythagorean Theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now that we have this information, we can begin to construct the algorithm. But what would that look like? Well, here's an example of one potential algorithm to solve this problem. And we'll notice some things that we're going to see again and again as we go through the course. First, since we have two inputs, we're going to want to ask the user for some pieces of information. In this case, we're going to ask the user to input the lengths of the two sides. Now, once they, of course, type that at the terminal or however else we get our information into our program, we're going to want to input those pieces of information. So we see two lines which begin with the word input. And at the end of those lines, in blue, we see the names of variables. These are temporary storage locations where we can stick the value that the user has entered. We also see one line at the very end that begins with the word output. And here's where we actually produce the result of the program, in this case, the value of C. We also have two other lines which do our processing for us, or our computation. And they begin with the word compute. In this case, they do two simple math operations, which allow us to compute the value that we care about, the length of the hypotenuse. So let's walk through this algorithm and see if it actually works. This is where we demonstrate a desk check. Here's the algorithm which we have deemed to be correct. In other words, it will produce what, we're, what we ultimately want it to produce. Notice we have two words encompassing the instructions. They begin with the word begin, and they end with the word end. It's important to remember that all algorithms and computer programs have a logical beginning and a logical end. For any algorithm, we begin with the first instruction after the word begin. The first instruction says to ask the user to input the length of side A. This normally involves putting a message on the screen saying, please enter the length of side A. Next, we are going to input the length of side A. Normally this will involve the user typing a value using the keyboard and then hitting enter to send it to our program. When this happens, we take the value that the user's typed and it gets stored into our temporary storage. And we take note of that, which you can see at the bottom of the screen. This example assumes that the user has entered the value 3 for the length of side A. We then repeat this two-step process for the length of side B. And let's assume that the user types the value 4 to represent the length of side B. We take note of that, we write it down or otherwise take note of it as representing the value B. 
Next, now that we have a and b, we need to compute what c squared is using the Pythagorean theorem. This line that begins with the word compute will perform that operation. Now notice here we have another temporary storage location called c underscore squared. When we compute that value, 3 squared plus 4 squared, we get the value 25. Now we're not yet done. We have one more step. In order to compute the value of c, we need to take the square root of 25. That's the purpose of our present instruction. Compute c to be the square root of c squared. And we write that down as well. c is the value 5, which indeed is the correct answer. The last line of our algorithm will send that value to the output. Normally that output will be to the screen although later in the course we will see how we can send output to other places, such as files. At this point, the algorithm would end. We would look back and see, well, what did we produce? In our case, we produced the value 5, given the inputs 3 for A and 4 for B. We could check this against the hand calculation using the Pythagorean theorem, and we would see that this is indeed the correct answer for a equals 3 and b equals 4. But what would an incorrect algorithm look like? Well, here's an example of an incorrect algorithm, something that if we were to walk through it with a desk check, we would recognize as being wrong. In other words, producing the wrong result. If we walk through the instructions, much like we did with the correct algorithm, and we use the same input values, we're going to see that we have one flaw in our logic. The present line says compute c equals a times a plus b times b. Well that gives us 25. In other words it really gives us c squared not c. This last line which outputs the desired value which would output 25 which is not the correct answer for the Pythagorean theorem given that a is 3 and b is 4. This is a kind of flaw that you can find by walking through your algorithm one step at a time, taking note of the values that you're keeping that you're using in your program, and it's something that could easily be fixed before you try and translate this into a programming language. That is the entire purpose of a desk check, to allow you to find these flaws before you try and translate your algorithm into a foreign language.